Hey y'all and thanks for stopping by Design by Kathy. Today for this uh, Tuesday's tip I want to talk about pouring mediums. Uh, I know there's just so much out there and a lot of times it can be incredibly overwhelming um, and if you're especially if you're new to uh, you're, you're new to paint pouring and you got you start reading and you look at Facebook groups and you look at videos it, it can get very overwhelming so Basically, what I want to do today is just break down the purpose of a medium and why we use it in fluid painting. Uh, this is not to discount anybody else's homemade or whatever you've come up with. Right now, I just want to talk about the basics and then we can move on from there. But let's get right to it. Okay, one of the, uh, and I don't have a big bottle, but I've just got this little bottle of Liquitex, uh, Liquitex Professional Pouring Medium. This one happens to be, uh, well, this is a gloss medium and varnish. I'm out of just the Liquitex uh, Pouring Medium. If I was going to do a big piece and be, uh, you know, going to be charging several hundred dollars and up for, to a customer, I would definitely, definitely go with the Liquitex because it does have the archival properties and it's it's made for artists uh, now my favorite my go-to that I use every day is the flood Floatrol. Um, I use this 99.9% .9 of the time as my pouring medium the leveling quality um, you know the flowability of you know my paints uh, this one, uh, I would say, is pretty consistent. As long as you make mix, you know, your different bodies of and weights of your paint. As long as you mix that all the same consistency using the Floatrol, you know, you're gonna get you're gonna get good results. I do um, I do really like the it, the this is this would be one of my most favorite. It's um, very affordable. Uh, cost effective. Let me say cost effective. It's very cost effective, and it is considered to have to be archival. Um, now this one, the golden. I don't have the. Uh, the I, this is just one I had, and I just didn't want to forget to talk about golden. But the GAC 800 by Golden. Uh, it is. It's a very good one, and it's also considered archival. I, uh, you know, haven't used this as much to be able to tell you. Like some of them, like Floatrol, will do like a, a two, uh, you know, one part paint, two part Floatrol. Liquitex usually is a one and one. This one, you know, I really, uh, again, you'll need to mix and get that s s little stream off your stir stick um, consistency and just make sure across the board of the colors you're going to be using, they're all that same consistency. Uh, so I picked up this Sargent. I haven't tried this one yet. Uh, so I really can't um, compare it to these others, but I just wanted you to know there's so many different brands out there, and I'm not even touching them how many there actually are because there are a lot. Uh, but that's one I want to try uh, in something and kind of see how it's, it, you know, see how it performs. It does say it's uh, water resistant, quick drying, and non yellowing. Now when I saw the quick drying, I thought, hmm, that's interesting because products like your Floatrol, it's just made to extend your paint to self-level and it uh, reduces the drying time so you have more work time, which is why painters, house painters and whatnot, use the, the Floatrol. Um, one thing I really, really, and I have a little picture I'll put up here in the screen, is people talking about not liking to use some of these because they say it changes uh, the color of the paint. When you mix it, and you want to mix it very, very thoroughly, you don't want to have any little pieces of paint in there that have not dissolved. You want to mix it as thorough as possible. And it may have a little bit of a cloudy look on some of your colors, but here is the thing it's going to dry to its actual color. And I have a little comparison chart that I did up one day. I had some colors mixed, so I'm going to pop that in and show it to you. But it's not going to affect your end result of your paint color. The other thing, I don't want I didn't grab this one. Oops. 
is your uh, PVA, which is polyvinyl acetate, Elmer's glue, Elmer's glue all. This one I picked up one day because I was uh, uh, not sure why. Probably out of something and I just grabbed it. But um, this will work. This means you can definitely, uh, I, ha I have a video I did, uh, I think I gave it to all you guys. I did it when uh, the quarantine first started and I was trying to uh, give some ideas to parents of things to do with their kids and if they had some paint and what to mix it with, just activities to entertain the kids, you know, when we thought it was going to be a two-week quarantine that turned in like to forever. But anyway, the Elmer's glue will work. Uh, the PVA glue, there's different, there's also different brands of that, you know, Elmer's, like everybody knows about Elmer's, but there's a, uh, so there's a lot to choose from there. The thing with it, it it's going to work. Uh, for your poor, but it is not considered on the archival archival list. Um, also, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't really understand for me. Now, I guess it's going to depend on where you are and how readily available you can get the Floetrol because the price of uh, per ounce of Floetrol versus the price per ounce of the glue Floetrol in my area is cheaper. By the gallon and then by the ounce of course uh, again it is not considered to be uh, artist archival uh, quality this is another one and I have used it um, again as far as cost you can see this is regular $35 and I got it for $19.99 versus Floetrol which Mine here in East Texas is $14.99. Therefore, why do you think I would pick? <laughs> now, uh, again, if it was Liquitex, since that one, like I said, is considered by artists to be the very best top of the line for artists. But the the Deco Art, it works, it works really well too. Uh, again, for me on the Deco Art, it was the uh, the cost effectiveness of it. So now, with all this being said, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to add a little water. Oftentimes, I will mix up my Floetrol. Uh, and this looks kind of <laughs> used and abused. But the Floetrol, I will put 80% um, Floetrol with 20% water. That is okay to mix it in with your medium. Because you're not mixing so much that you're going to take away the purpose of the medium. Or I hadn't had it happen so far. Uh, I've had, you know, really fine luck with that. Um... Also, I want to, you know, I want to say that, you know, I know a lot of people are uh, trying to create their own homemade medium. Well, you might can, I mean, I don't know. Some of you may be scientists or chemists, and that's going to work really well for you. And you know what? If it works, it works. Use it. I certainly wouldn't say not to, but I know I'm not a chemist, and I know what the purpose of this is. I know what it was made for. So, for me, and if you're new to um, you're new to pouring, start with what is made to work. Then, once you branch out, experiment with what you want to, because that's part of what makes it fun. And to me, that's part of what makes fluid painting so much fun and so gratifying. Is because there's really not rules. There are no rules. They're there to do whatever you want to do. So. Uh, an experiment, and I love experiments. Uh, I hate it when they go bad, of course, but I love it when they work well, and that's fun. And then, like I said, it's gratifying. So definitely branch out. But like, you know, I really want to uh, speak directly to any of you that are new, and there's so much confusing uh, information because people have, you know, uh, maybe for whatever reason moved on to create something else or do something else. But just remember, you can make a paint additive. An additive and the medium are two different things. So, but if it still makes your your painting work, then I say go for it. Um, I don't know, you know, since I don't know what you're using and don't know what you know, you'll have to ask me down below what kind of uh, what you're what you're talking about uh, to talk about the archival quality of it. To me, that's very important because if I create something and it comes out fabulous, I want to know it's going to still look fabulous in 10 years. Uh, that's just me. Maybe a lot of people, you know, that's not a priority, but it, it happens to me uh, be one 
for me. So one key thing to take away from this is that pouring mediums bind with your paint. They're going to hold your paint together. When I say bind, remember that water separates it. So using water alone, yeah, you can do it and you can pour and you can have fun, but you're going to have loss of pigment, which is going to cause other, you know, other things to uh, kind of foul up with your end results. So anyway, that's my uh, Tuesday tip, and I hope this was helpful. Uh, it was all clear as could be in my <laughs> in my mind. I hope I came across that way to you guys, because sometimes you know you go to thinking and like, did I cover that? Did I miss that? And sometimes my brain is running so fast and, you know, my husband and my daughter and my family will say, well, you left that part out. Anyway, I hope I didn't leave any parts out. If I did and I wasn't clear, pop me a question down below. I'll be happy to answer it. And uh, next week I want to talk about, um, we're going to talk about paints and, and different, different paints. Unless you all leave me a question of something else you'd like to see me address before we talk about the different paints and uh, maybe some recipes and whatnot. So, like I said, if you've got an idea, pop it below and we'll we'll address it. But, hey, thank you all for uh, stopping by for this Tuesday tip. I look forward to seeing you for my next video. And then again, let's start back up next week with Tuesday tips. So, have a great week. And uh, my new video uh, will come out on Thursday uh, after this one. New one will come out on Thursday, so I hope that you'll check back for that. Please subscribe, hit the, hit the bell for notifications, and please leave a thumbs up. I can't tell you how much these help. Uh, all of our, all the YouTubers that you watch, these things are very important for us to be able to buy supplies for our video uh, channels. So anyway, see you next time.